so finally, we now have Matt's Pick of the Week. And for this week, I decided that, you know what? We're closing in on 2016. It's soon going to be the end of the year, and soon 2017 will roll along. But for movie fans, that would actually mean one thing. Right around the corner, it's going to be award season. Soon we're going to be hearing all the different types of news regarding stuff like the Golden Globes, the Oscars, the Annies, the Critics' Choice Awards, the SAG, Aw the, the SAG Awards, and all that kind of stuff. And often we are going to be hearing about the same movies being awarded again and again and again and again. No matter, no matter what it is, it's going to be that time and we got to get ready. And even for me, like considering uh, my journalism job on film book, I got to get ready for that. Uh, but anyways, going into what I was talking about, um, for now, we actually do have a little bit of a preview of what could be coming up in terms of the Oscars. And the story that I decided to go for Matt's Pick of the Week is that uh, in terms of the Academy Awards, 27 animated features have been revealed to be uh, in submission so that it can have a chance to get a nomination for Best Animated Feature at the Academy Awards. Now, I just want to mention that this is apparently a brand new record for uh, this is apparently the most animated films that were submitted to... Um, the Oscars for the for the category of best animated features. Like uh, if you look at the previous years, some would be sixteen, some would be twenty. But like having twenty seven, that's actually pretty crazy when you think about it. Uh, but yeah, now I decided uh, for this one, I want to play a special game though. Now even though it's not necessarily as fun trying to predict uh, who's going to be the winner among the nominees, because like ninety percent of the time. Let's be honest, the winner is going to be the one that starts with na 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 even though that technically 90% of the time they do deserve that win anyways. Um, like even though it's not as fun predicting the winner, you know, I want to go and play the game of trying to predict of who's going to be the nominations. That's actually a lot of fun and a lot more interesting to discuss about and uh, you never know who would end up actually getting the nomination. And in a way, getting a nomination um, is actually a bit more of an honor than getting a win. Because often, since like we know mostly Disney films would dominate that category anyways, getting a nomination means that you would actually get some recognition. That would give movies 15 minutes of fame uh, in order to be recognized by the public. Like, I know that there are many films out there like Anomalisa, Song of the Sea, The Secret of Kells, and all that kind of stuff. They're pretty much recognized right now thanks to, um, uh, thanks to the recognition that it, well, yeah, like, it got recognized thanks to the recognition that it has because it is a, uh, an Oscar-nominated film. You know, and it's often great. So, I decided, you know what? Let's do this. We're going to we're going to work on this together. I actually did a lot of research uh knowing what all the all these 27 movies are and I decided to go one by one to see like which ones we know are not going to be nominated, which ones we know will be nominated and which ones could be nominated. And I actually did that all on paper. And even though this is a podcast, you can't actually see me uh having a piece of paper with it. I actually do have proof. Listen. See? That's a piece of paper. But anyways, let's get down to it and let's begin uh, our little prediction game. And so, the nominees for the nominees for Best Animated Feature at the Academy Awards are... <clears throat> the Angry Birds Movie, April and the Extraordinary World, Bilal, Finding Dory, Ice Age Collision Course, Kingsglaive Final Fantasy XV, Kubo and the Two Strings, Kung Fu Panda 3, The Little Prince, Long Way North, Miss Hokusai, Moana, Monkey King, Hero is Back, Mune, Mustafa and the Magician, My Life as a Zucchini, Phantom Boy, The Red Turtle, Sausage Party, The Secret Life of Pets, Sing, Snow Time, Storks, Trolls, 25 April, 
Your Name, and finally, Zootopia. And those are the 27 submitted animated films who are in competition to go and grab a nomination. And so, let us begin on to going, like, analyzing the list. And let's start off by taking the, uh, let's take away the ones that we know are not going to get nominated. Let's start off by getting rid of those so that we can pretty much end their misery. So, first things first, um, we know that, in this year, we have several movies that are based on video games, rather they be Ratchet and Clank, The Angry Birds Movie, and King's Glaive Final Fantasy XV. But let's be honest, they really are not the greatest. In fact, some of them, like Ratchet and Clank, can be considered some of the worst animated films of the year. So that's why I pretty much decided they're not gonna chan they're not gonna get a chance to get an Oscar nomination, so I pretty much took off the Angry Birds movie and King's Glaive Final Fantasy XV. Now, the next thing I decided to take off are pretty much the independent animated features that didn't get massive praise. Now, a lot of these are actually very well reviewed, but uh, there are a few of them, however, like they got massive, high, like highly acclaimed reviews that if they don't reach to that level, then chances are they're not going to get a nomination. So that's why I pretty much removed movies like uh, Bilal, I took off Moon, I took off Snow Time, uh, and I also took off 25 April. Now, I just want to mention, however, the first one that I immediately crossed off, uh, knowing that it will never get an Oscar nomination for Best Animated Feature, I immediately took away Ice Age Collision Course. There is no way in freaking hell that's gonna get a nomination. In fact, it's kind of foolish for 20th Century Fox to even submit that onto the category. There's no, like, no way that the fifth, the fifth freaking Ice Age film where Sid gets a girlfriend would ever get an Oscar nomination. Are you freaking kidding me? But anyways, uh, moving right along, I decided to also take away the ones that were pretty much made in Japan and in China. Because, let's be honest, when it comes to Asian animated features, unless you're nomin uh, unless you were made by Studio Ghibli, you chances are you're not going to get that nomination. So, uh, I decided to pretty much take away Miss Hokusai, I took away Monkey King, and I also took off Your Name. So, that's not going to get a nomination. And then I took off Mustafa and the Magician. I decided to cross that off as well. And, uh, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. Like, I'm going to be real here. I'm going to put this in the nicest way possible. Out of all the animated films that are submitted on this list, Mustafa and the Magician is the least likely to get a nomination uh, at the Oscars for this category. Like, even more than Ice Age Collision Course. And, again, that's the nicest way that I could put it. Um, the only thing I could say is that if you're curious to why, just look it up. Just look up Mustafa and the Magician, and you'll see for yourself. You're just gonna find out on your own to why it's not gonna get that nomination. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just saying that. <laughs> okay, but anyways, moving right along, I also took off Sausage Party from the list, because here's the thing, even though I do like Sausage Party, and I do consider it the funniest movie of the year, let's be real, guys, since when have you heard of a Seth Rogen comedy get an Oscar nomination? That's kind of the thing. I, I, I don't really see that get nominated. Uh, but anyways... Uh, the next thing I took off is The Secret Life of Pets. I don't know if it's really strong enough to actually get an Oscar nomination, but honestly, I don't I don't really see it. It's just, uh, like, there are better animated films that are on this list than The Secret Life of Pets, so I don't really see it, like, get that high honor. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that I took off Snow Time in 25 April. Maybe I did, but I'm just going to mention that just in case. Like, that's another one of, the, like, those two are also in the same category of, um, mo like, pretty much independent films that are not highly acclaimed, so I took off those. I, like, maybe I already mentioned that, but I just want to repeat it just in case, in, in case I forgot. I also decided to take away Storks because, let's be honest, like, as one of those cartoony animated films, it's not gonna get that nomination, especially if, like, 
it, it ended up becoming an afterthought. There's no way. And then finally, I also decided to take away trolls. Now, the one thing I just want to mention is that I took off trolls from the list because let's be honest, it, it, it's almost unanimously agreed that Kung Fu Panda 3 is the superior DreamWorks film this year. But I would not be surprised if it would actually end off with an Oscar nomination. Not for Best Animated Feature, but if it could actually get an like a, a nominee for Best Original Song for Can't Stop the Feeling or something like that. I can actually imagine it happening. I mean, if Despicable Me 2 would actually get an Oscar nomination for the song Happy, then I wouldn't be surprised if Trolls would get a nomination for Can't Stop the Feeling. That, I'm just saying that right now. So, for Best Animated Feature, no. For Best Original Song, maybe. But anyhow, that's pretty much all the ones that I'm pretty sure are not going to get a nomination. Now let's move on to the ones that we know for a fact are going to get a nomination. The ones that we are the most confident that will be nominated for Best Animated Feature. Now first things first, let us put in uh, your standard Disney film. Now it's very rare that a, a Disney movie would actually not get an Oscar nomination for Best Animated Feature, but... It's usually very common and, you know, it's honestly very, it's honestly expected. Like, we know there would be a Disney film in that category somewhere. And in this case, I decided to put in Zootopia. That we can guarantee is going to get that nomination, considering that uh, when, when, it, when it comes to Zootopia, it is a highly praised movie. Many critics and audiences absolutely adored it. And it is a massively successful animated feature. It's one of the two animated films that actually surpassed a billion dollars this year. So that's why I can pretty much guarantee you that Zootopia will be on this list. And then afterwards, uh, equally with our standard uh, Disney film on the list, we also need our standard stop motion film. Now, whenever either Laika or Ardman would make an animated feature, uh, would, would make one of their stop motion feature films, it's got to get an Oscar nomination, no matter what. Like, even, like, actually, it's not just Laika and Ardman. If it's a mainstream, wide release, stop motion animated feature film, it's always got to get a nomination. Like, even if it's Fantastic Mr. Fox or Anomalisa or even Frankenweenie, it's got to get it because. Stop motion has a reservation in there for some reason. And that's why I can guarantee you that Kubo and the Two Strings is going to get an Oscar nomination. And the reason why I say that, um, like, even if it's actually not stop motion animated, it's guaranteed to have, like, it's guaranteed to have that nomination either way. It's such a phenomenal film. And it definitely deserves to have that Oscar nomination for Best Animated Feature, hands down. And then there is another one. Now, for this one, it can be a bit unpredictable, but this is the standard independent animated feature films. These are the ones that are not made by the big studios like Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, Illumination, or any of those ones. Now, these are the ones that are lesser known. They would pop up from festival to festival, and, uh, you know, they would have their moment of worldwide fame by getting that Oscar nomination. And the one that I decided to put in, I decided to use The Red Turtle. Not only is it a highly praised animated feature and that it would frequently get a lot of like news buzz around, but the reason why I put it is mostly because of the association with Studio Ghibli. Now, if you look back in recent years, the Studio Ghibli films would often get an Oscar nomination. Rather it be The Wind Rises, uh, The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, or When Marnie Was There, like, they would immediately get recognition at the Oscars. Now, technically, some people would make an exception and they would explain that it, like, technically there is a bit of a reason why they would get nominated, not just because it's Studio Ghibli, but because, like, it's kind of like the final feature films of, like, well, people, or uh, should I say, kind of ex like people expected to be the final feature films of like Hayao Miyazaki, Aiseo Takahata, and just Studio Ghibli in general. But honestly, with this kind of pattern, I can imagine that they could also include in The Red Turtle. So that's why I'm putting it as kind of a guarantee, like, or at the very least, 
the Red Turtle, among all the independent animated feature film, the Red Turtle is the one that would most likely get that Oscar nomination. And so that would leave us with two empty slots. So we got Zootopia, Kubo and the Two Strings, and the Red Turtle. What are going to, what is the two remaining spots that are going to be filled? Well, one thing I can guarantee you is that one spot is going to be filled with a mainstream animated feature, and the other one could actually be filled with uh, another independent animated feature. Because if we look back in recent years, like last year and the year before that, um, we're starting to see two animated, uh, like two independent animated feature films not associated with a, um, you know, not 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 necessarily associated with a big name uh, studio that would get that nomination. So at least in, th so let's assume that this year as well, we're going to get two independent animated features getting a nomination. So the ones that I put in as a maybe in terms of the mainstream animated feature films that could get a nomination, I put in Finding Dory, Kung Fu Panda 3, The Little Prince, Moana, and Sing. Now, I just want to mention, by the way, that as of this podcast that I am doing right now, uh, both Moana and Sing have yet to be released in theaters. So there is no confirmation if I can fully know if these movies would actually be good or not to get that Oscar nomination. Now, even though with Moana, there is a higher chance that it might actually get a nomination considering that it is from Disney and usually Disney would immediately get like a reservation spot to get a nomination. But with Sing, it's really hard to determine. Like so far, I have heard some good things about it, but I don't know if it's going to be good enough to get a nomination at the Oscars. Who knows? Like, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm pretty much putting Sing and Moana as a maybe as well, because I have yet to see it. And maybe it could actually be really good enough to uh, get an Oscar nomination, but who knows? Now, I, I, but I will say right now that, like, a lot of them do have a strong chance. Like, rather if it's either Sing, Moana, Kung Fu Panda 3, or Finding Dory. Because usually Pixar has a good reputation to get a, an Oscar nomination, especially with Finding Dory, uh, considering that's another move, like, um, similar to Zootopia, that is highly praised by critics, and uh, it surpassed a billion dollars at the box office this year, so, it, like, maybe Finding Dory could get a higher chance, but I would say that among the ones that I put in as a maybe, the one that would get the lowest chance, I would have to say it's hands down, the Little Prince. Now, technically, a lot of people could say that, oh, it will get a nomination because it does have some stop motion. But the thing with The Little Prince, I don't know about you, I just don't feel like it's really that, it's it's really good enough to get that Oscar nomination. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this is going to be that animated feature that if it doesn't get a nomination, then fans are going to be flipped out. You know, like they, like there would be like this outrage going on. Like, I can understand, like, um, last year, like, there was a tiny bit with the Peanuts movie, but it was really minor, but it seriously got out of hand when the Lego movie didn't get a nomination. Like, that, that was, like, uh, to the point that it was just absolutely ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much my say on those maybes. But in terms of the independent animated feature films... Like, if they would actually select a second independent animated film to get a nomination, the ones that I put in in Maybe, like, all of them are pretty much highly praised. So, we got April in the Extraordinary World. That one, like, critics loved it. Long Way North, again, critics loved it. My Life as a Zucchini, I heard it was the toast of the Annecy International Animation Film Festival, so I wouldn't be surprised if that could get a nomination. And also, Phantom Boy. This is another one that G that I saw that G Kids is distributing, and apparently this was actually from the makers of A Cat in Paris, which if you guys don't remember, A Cat in Paris is another animated feature that actually did get a nomination at the Oscars. So, from, so yeah, that's pretty much my list of maybes. So, overall, if... I have to have no choice but to make a full-on prediction of the five animated feature films that will be nominated for Best Animated Feature. If I have to do one, I was probably thinking, 
uh, maybe the nominees, my predictions would be Zootopia, Kubo and the Two Strings, Finding Dory, The Red Turtle, and My Life as a Zucchini. Those are my, those are probably the ones that I, I like, that's the ones that I think could get a nomination. Now, even though I am guaranteed that, I, I know for a fact that Zootopia and Kubo will get that nomination. Maybe I could be wrong. Again, this is all a prediction. Uh, you can leave down in the comments on your thoughts of who could be the, no uh, like, who do you think, um would actually get nominated for best animated feature like th this is not just me doing it like you guys can get along like you guys can uh, join along as well suggest your predictions you know suggest what you think will actually be the five animated feature films that will be nominated for best animated feature so you guys go and have fun with that hey guys this is animat i just want to remind you guys that this is just a little taste of what you can get with the animation podcast this is not all of it if you guys want to go and listen to the full episodes of the animation podcast then allow me to show you some of the different ways that you can go uh first off you can actually go on the website that it is hosted on filmbook so you can go directly onto there you can also go and check out the official Filmbook Podcast YouTube page, so at least you don't have to go away from YouTube and you can listen to the podcast right there. But if you would like to listen on the go, like if you want to listen it to your on your phone or on your iPad and all that kind of stuff, then you can listen to it on either iTunes or you can listen to it on Android. So those are all the different options. And if you'd like to have more info, then all you have to do is just check in the description down below. And with all that said, I just want to say thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, see you later, dudes.